the IBM Portable Modular Data Center solution. This is a 40-foot shipping container that we basically turn into a uh, data center space. We start with uh, the shipping container, line the walls with insulation so that we can maintain the environment inside the, inside the data center, so temperature, humidity, uh, uh, control. You can see some of the thickness of the insulation, for example, here on the, on the door. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like this to be able to support uh, uh, you know, a desert environment, uh, uh, an Arctic environment. Mm -hmm. After we've done that, what I've got then is an is a, is a 8 foot by 40 foot, in this instance, a 40 foot space that I, I turn into data center. Right? Everything from power distribution, fire protection, fire detection, I can have security systems, so this is, you know, video camera, for example, up there. Uh, electrical distribution to the equipment racks. Um, all the normal things you would expect to, to find in a data center, you'd find in the PMDC. Uh, this is a this is a, a, a you know a mock-up, a, a model of what's possible. So in the bottom of this rack, this is the IdeaFlex rack. We've got an example of what's possible from a seismic uh, uh, mounting. Right, so this is, uh, I'm not sure what zone, uh, but we, we've got alternatives to be able to seismically mount the cabinets to support, uh, uh, you know, those particular needs. Uh, so in the event of an earthquake, then the server rocks back and forth on those springs. Right, and we actually have a, 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 a spring up here also to be able to take the, uh, the movement back, uh, back and forth that way. So it just depends on how they're mounted. And now on these IT equipment racks, we have three different cooling methods in here. I wondered if you could show me this start with uh, this rack here and the rear door cooling yeah, approach. So here's one method of cooling that we can use. So uh, this would be a standard IT equipment rack potentially um, uh, installed uh, in an operating position here. If you need access to the front, the door will open. If you need access to the back, I'm going to slide it all the way forward. On this rack, we have what we call a rear door heat exchanger for, for cooling. Mm -hmm. uh, fundamentally, it's a pretty simple uh, mechanism, right? It's a radiator. Right. Uh, uses chilled water. It can use uh, DX, uh, mm -hmm. but in this instance, a chilled water solution, as the heat's generated by the servers, it's blown through the door, absorbed uh, by the door, the heat rejected uh, uh, to the environment is actually cooler uh, than, the, <laughs> than, the, than the incoming air. So it's a 100% or more uh, heat removal. Very effective mm -hmm. for high density loads. Um, we like to use them in these kind of solutions because of the, uh, it minimizes the space requirement. Mm -hmm. So this is one method of cooling. Uh, another method uh, that we have demonstrated in here is uh, an in-row cooling unit, uh, uh, this one uh, by APC. So uh, these units um, use either chilled water or uh, DX or glycol um, to reject the heat to the outside. Uh, the, the fans blow cold air out the front, mm -hmm. uh, draw the hot air off the back, off the hot aisle, uh, remove the heat and, and uh, distribute cold air out here in the front. So in that configuration you would pin down the servers about halfway in to create yeah. a hot aisle in the back. Right, so they'd normally be pinned down in, in a position something like this. Uh, this would be the normal operating position. Mm -hmm. um, the door is still fully open and I can get access to the front. This would be the mm -hmm. cold aisle where I'm standing and the hot aisle uh, at the back. Right. Um, and so all of these would be lined up. If, uh, if the in-row cooling unit was used, it would be lined up here. It would be distributing cold air out here. Got sensors in the rack monitoring the inlet mm -hmm. temperature to the servers and the variable speed fans in the, in the cooling unit then would ramp up or down to provide the right temperature here. What we don't have in here um, is, you know, we also use other commercially available cooling solutions. We can use overhead cooling solutions mm -hmm. uh, if we're trying to maximize floor space. Mm -hmm. And then at the back of this particular container, we have a natural free cooling solution, which is, <coughs> excuse me, uses the outside air temperatures up to 75 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, about uh, 23 degrees C, um, to <coughs> provide the cooling uh, for uh, the data center space. So, uh, without any mechanical cooling, just fans. So what you have here is, is uh, <clears throat> an environment, a closed environment, in which you can cool a rack like this one with a rear door heat exchanger, or you can use a hot aisle, cold aisle config, uh, config yep. with the in-row cooling system, or can we move to the back yep. and just take a look at the... Uh, the uh, third approach, which is the free cooling system. Yeah. So this is this is, the free cooling system is really just a, a, a means of delivering that uh, that heat removal. This would be uh, the, re, the the cold uh, the cold air uh, being exhausted out mm -hmm. of the cold aisle, and there'd be a partition. We'd usually have like a uh, a partition here 
hanging right. partition. But back here is the uh, the hot air is exhausted from the hot aisle and drawn into the into the cooling unit. The cooling unit being out here in the, in the back part of the. You know what? I'm going to just go ahead and, uh, and step in there. Step step in here. And I'll have, there we go. Slide this rack there you go. away. Yeah, and here we here we have a, a hot air exhaust, two variable speed fans. Yep. That blow air into, and I'm going to step just outside here. Into an external chamber, yep. <coughs> which is mounted physically outside the structure you just showed us. So, right, so there's a division, there's a divider there, and this is this is actually outside, exposed to the outside air. Uh, there's a heat exchanger in there that's got a, a, a gas in it that's got a low boiling point, so that at, uh, at, I can still uh, um, uh, do the heat exchange even at as high as 75 degrees uh, Fahrenheit without any compressor or any mechanical system. So you would bring in cool air up to 75 degrees through these vents, yes. use the gas heat exchanger in order to cool down. Yep, it's actually reject, taking the heat from the inside, mm -hmm. taking, it out of the, uh, uh, taking it out of the air, rejecting it to the outside, and, and then cool air back in uh, to, the, uh, to the cold air. This is an example of a high-density IBM compute rack here. Yeah, this, so this is an iDataplex. Mm -hmm. uh, I apologize, I don't know the density of the IT capacity. This is mm -hmm. a, a boatload of servers. It looks like it, it looks like somewhat more than 80 servers, and I understand that's 14 to 15 kilowatts for that one kind of double-wide rack right can, there. This thing can be as high as about 35 kilowatts in this rack, fully loaded. And you would cool that with? Rear door heat exchanger. There's, there's a large rear door, double wide rear door heat exchanger on this rack also. When IBM created these rear door heat exchangers initially to support this kind of cooling, and then what we did is we licensed the rear door heat exchanger technology to uh, uh, another vendor so that it could fit on any kind of rack. So with this kind of compute capacity, you can support any number of workloads through a, a portable modular data yeah. center. So we've had uh, we've done configurations working with customers to try to met you know what's the maximum uh, server capacity I could put into one container using this kind of solution working with mm -hmm. our uh, S with STG with the, mm -hmm. the Systems and Technology Group. Um, you know, forget the numbers are something like ten thousand servers in a in a single mm -hmm. container using this kind of. Uh, 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 technology and then maximizing capacity in the in the uh, container. And customers to date for this in Canada have included mining companies. Yeah, they don't go. They're not usually going this route, right? They're not looking for ten thousand servers. This would be more on the Google kind of Google right. Microsoft kind of approach. But our solutions have been for customers uh, in the, actually um, mining, uh, movie making. Mm -hmm. um, but we've had a little bit of uh, uh, we've had some universities looking at it. Um, uh, we've had the military uh, procure some, so the, mm -hmm. the, the use cases are, 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 are variable. Um, most of them have been for um, what I'll call semi-permanent IT capacity in remote locations mm -hmm. or for expansion, for need for uh, additional compute capacity. And basically these are configured any way a customer needs using off-the-shelf components shoehorned, as you said, yeah, into a shoehorned container. Yeah, shoehorned into the space. So it's a question of what are the, what's the customer's requirements from an IT perspective in the container? Uh, from a you know density rack spaces, it's usually rack spaces, power and cooling, mm -hmm. and then how to make that work in uh, you know in a in a shipping container. Mike, on behalf of IT in Canada, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks.